This one's very exciting. This is our all new ultra low profile, all billet intercooler. that fits the Holly high ram, low ram manifolds. Right now it's on a low ram, but the whole intent behind this was to bring the package height down. I've had a lot of guys asking, you know, reduce the height, reduce the height. And rather than doing the sheet metal route, uh, we wanted to make it as beautiful as a part as we could. We spent a lot of time designing, a ton of time making sure that the, the airflow looked good, changing the entry angles, changing the tapers, making sure that our package height stayed low. But it's finally here and it's finally in front of us and we can finally talk about it. Standard 102 entry, just like most all of your high rams and low rams, you're going to get a 102 entry. So that's standard on here. It uses the same core as our 1400 horsepower intercooler does now. With that, we're able to use the same side plate configuration, giving you the four ports that we've been doing forever. Same dash 12 size as our standard 1400 horsepower core. The four ports give you the ability to do like a dual entry and a dual exit, just like with the standard, or you can do a single entry on this corner, a single exit on this corner, you know, however you need to configure this to make it work. A lot of guys have clearance issues with their coolant hoses going to their intercoolers because of having a taller injector. Uh, so we eliminated that with the angled inlets on the side plates themselves. The intercooler top, all billet construction, five axis CNC machined. It is a uh, machined out of one solid piece. No welding on the lid or the entry whatsoever. Welding is at a very minimum on this assembly. With a standard LS1 style base going off of a low ram, uh, you're looking at about a 9.9 .9 inch install height uh, from the valley surface to the top of the manifold. Or if you're wanting to do the math on your particular manifold, whether it be a Holly manifold or not, you know, a lot of aftermarket manifolds have this bolt pattern now. The height of the cooler from the base where it bolts to the flange to the highest point, which is right here behind the throttle body, is 4.75 inches. So four and three quarters of an inch. So if you know the height of your base or whatever particular base you have that you're trying to use, you can just add that number to that value that you know, and then that'll tell you about how high this manifold is going to sit. In the rear, it's intended to be lower than the cast lid was. The cast holly lid, the highest point is out in front of the manifold, just, just a little bit in front of the manifold. With this, we're basically right in line with the very front of the manifold at our peak height, and then it tapers down all the way from there. The back of the manifold sets lower than the cast lid would as well. That's important for a lot of vehicles that have cowl overhang, specifically things like F-bodies, Corvettes, etc. I'm not saying that it'll fit a Corvette. It does add a lot of clearance on vehicles that do have tight fitment in that area. Uh, so distribution is the same as any manifold mounted intercooler. Once it goes through the fins of the cooler, the air all straightens out. So distribution is actually way better with this than it would be with just a standard lid bolted on. What's included when you buy this thing is exactly what you see here above the Holly manifold. The cooler brick or midsection, the throttle body entry, and the lid are all uh, one assembly. Uh, some people are going to ask, and I think some people have already asked if they've been keeping up with us, if they've seen us drop some hints of this thing and uh, maybe talk about it a little bit in the past, but the lid itself can't just be bolted to the standard cooler that we make. It has to be this style because the entryway um, is part of the lower, the, the entryway is part of the lower uh, cooler assembly. So it can't be interchanged with what we have and unfortunately that's just the way that it is but one one good thing about this uh you know we sell these as combo deals uh you know we're a holly distributor and we sell a lot of holly manifolds naturally because we sell a lot of intercoolers if you purchase a lower minus a lid with this intercooler you're not really spending a lot more than you would if you purchased the cooler and the manifold with a cast lid uh it's it's really not a lot of difference and that's that's one reason we decided to go after this this style is because at the end of the day it's really not as expensive as people would think being all billet so it comes pre-assembled pretty much in the state that you see uh, the throttle body inlet is pinned on so the we like to put the lid in a specific location we don't recommend that you take it off uh, for any reason to do the assembly these will include arp hardware to bolt to your lower manifold um, it'll have 10 long bolts that go down through and then it'll have two short bolts for the underneath area up here we also have an optional throttle cable bracket it would mount down here underneath with these two bolts in the front um, that's going to run the cable underneath the manifold and then around the linkage on the throttle body on this side and that would give you you know a flipped throttle body configuration is what we like to call it and it would give you the best uh, fit as far as the hood uh, because it takes all that IAC and everything and puts it down on the bottom and uh, gives you the, the flattest finish. Is it important to have a plenum before the intercooler? 
Not necessarily, because the if you think about it, the cooler itself is part of the plenum. Uh, so technically, you'd be adding volume anyway. So you are essentially pressurizing, once it passes the throttle body, you're pressurizing everything? Uh, correct, yeah. So everything in, inside of this is under pressure. Air slows down when it's under pressure. Uh, so it'll flow a little more evenly. Uh, and again, like I say, the, the core acts as like a comb and it just takes all that turbulent air and it forces it to be straight as it goes down. Are intercoolers air restrictions? Technically, yes, an intercooler is an air restriction, but there's a trade-off. Um, cooler, more dense air will make more horsepower in just about any application. So actually they took one of our intercoolers on an episode of Engine Masters and they actually dynoed an engine without coolant in the cooler at all. So yeah, even, even in their testing, they actually dynoed that engine naturally aspirated, no turbo. They just put the intercooler on it to see if it would kill power and it actually made more power then as well. And I, I would attribute that to, like I said, the addition of uh, volume, plenum volume. Thanks guys for watching. I hope you're as excited about this as we are. If you have any questions, give one of us a call or check it out online at techperformance.com.